video we are going to talk about data science and importance in industry so this uh, slides will explain you what is data science so on the right side can you see there are three circles which are denoting certain specific uh, expertise or fields so it's uh, like marketing statistics coding coding skills so data science is mixture of all these things not necessarily nowadays what data science is like you you need to take uh, some kind of data from marketing a uh, marketing will guide us like we want to have some analysis for something and we want to predict future sales or future losses whatever uh, or future condition whatever may be the problem statement so marketing will give us the data and the engineer would apply some statistical models or statistical analysis to the data because suppose we have a data of uh, say 20000 rows so that means simply we can't look at the data and conclude or find a conclusion so we need to plot it and uh, apply some statistical models or statistical analysis over it to come to a conclusion so if we do it manually it's going to take a long time but if we d use uh, computers to do it it's going to take very less time compared to manual so a data science is combination of all these three so you need to predict you need to find out what we need to do what i need to do or what my management uh, needs for in the future what i need to predict and then we are going to take the data relevant data and you yeah, feed it to the statistical models which we developed or which are already developed and uh, we are going to be using that so on the left side you are going to see a uh, hierarchy so this hierarchy tells what's the role of a data scientist or a, so a data scientist will take the data clean it and prepare it for machine learning algorithms okay and then he is going to do some exploratory data analysis using those results which he got from machine learning and advanced algorithm which help us taking out executing statis different statistical models and statistic features over a model and derive to a conclusion so this is all about basic about what is data science and what uh, going to be your key role or your role or responsibilities for as a data scientist so now we come to the application of the data science so the first and foremost the best example i would say is all of you or most of you might have got a call now and then saying that uh, so your number has been selected and we are offering a free credit card or a loan at a very less price to you so you know why why they say selected or so or some of your most of your parents might have got and you'll see that that you uh, suppose if you are not earning you are in college so you'll you hardly will get any phone or calls regarding this but as soon as you take out a job the call will start increasing day by day and for current now if you are in college or so your fathers must be having this and if your mom is not working mother is not working then she would get hardly any calls so why is that so it's so because what bank does is bank takes your data because can you imagine what bank has what bank has on us they have our name they have our image they uh, they have our photos they have our age they have our email ids aadhar card and pen card numbers phone numbers and they also have all of our transaction details so all in all they know all about your financial conditions okay so what do they do they'll take your transaction details your age your basic location 
and your customer ID and give it to a machine learning uh, data scientist what he's then going to run some algorithm over it and he's going to tell the probability that this person is going to take a loan from us ha is based on his condition and the parameters his probability is 80% or 90% or 20% so a person earning a very good amount and living in a rural area will have a less chance of getting that kind of call compared to a person having very mediocre salary and living in a city why because location plays a critical role people in the city are of like most of the time i'm saying in general not uh, outliers or exceptions so in general people in the city consume more spend more compared to people living in rural areas so even if a person is l earning a very good amount he is more uh, less likely to spend more as compared to a person living in city a person living in city would be more willing to take a loan and all other things so these all factors contribute but how do we get these factors how do we weight these factors so right at nowadays you can have a bank account of like 4 or 5 years old child bank has all the details so why why doesn't that 6 year old 6 year old child get uh, uh, get this calls why not uh, an it uh, like old person who is 60 70 years old these um, do not get these kind of calls because there is the risk because it's for sure that 6 year old kid is not going to take a loan and it 60 or 70 years of a old person is not going to need a loan because his responsibility or you can say his expenditures have become really low he is retired he is just he just stays in his home does not travel much as compared to what he used to travel on a daily basis so all these factors contribute so each factor has some weight and percentage you can say so these weights and percentage are found out with the help of statistical models and to speed up the work we're going to use computers so that's why your father like if you are in college you'll get hardly any call your father who is earning will get most of the calls and your mother won't get any call hardly one or two within days so this is live example of data science application can you see that so now we have a self driving car example so this is also an example of machine learning or data science how oh, you say why so self driving car has some sensors which sense which tells them what uh, like there is some object in front or on the right side left side or you are changing lane or you are driving too close to the lane that's why you need to get back get take the correct line or you need to apply a brake or something like that so why 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 we have all these things which are giving us feedback so why till now why there have been a completely self driving car because computer gets confused i'll show you in this video you see that we have a car uh, this white car is my self driving car and uh, this one uh, black one was my so the driver driven car let's see what happens so right now in that white car autopilot system has is on and it's uh, like maintaining its lane and everything which is fine so 
there is some stoppage in front of the car the car in the front stops and our self driving car also stops but see right now all sensors are working but the car in front takes a turn and that's why the system gets confused what to do what not to do so our car went on and hit the vehicle which was in front which was stopped which was stopped so that's why so that's why we need to feed more data to computer so that he can learn so suppose there is a situation like i take four person and give them same situation same car if they are driving on a road and uh, someone is someone or something is in came up in front of their car roughly 100 meters ahead so four different person would take four different actions but end result would be same they'll try not to hit that person or object which was which came in front of their car so we need to learn those from those instances we need to learn and do yeah, and feed it to the machine so that machine knows that in this kind of scenario what i have to do as we saw earlier machine got confused when the car in front changed its lane changed its lane because there was some uh, ca other car which was stopped or broken down or whatever so nowadays from like i would say there is another live example from your daily life is whenever you uh, search something on amazon on, or google you get to know uh, that nowadays you will find that as soon as you see something on google or amazon and you open up your social media or any other google page where ads are displaying you'll see that the same kind or similar kind of ads were coming for the product which you just saw so how the company knows because once you log it from your phone or web browser company knows your ip and they record it because they record it that this ip search for this item and for this i user from this ip went to this site and saw this product for this much seconds this much minute and from the past one week he's been visiting this kind of this site for regularly for this this much amount of time for past one month like this so they're going to display the relevant ads to you so that you see only thing which you want to see or which you want to buy and you ultimately buy because it's human tendency with the thing i am planning to buy or have something in mind to buy it and people will try to show you that then you most more likely to buy that thing thereby increasing the sales so this is the live one of like two three live examples in your uh, life yeah, for, of data science which you can directly relate to so nowadays like uh, these are some fields where mom, there is heavy deployment of uh, data sciences e-commerce we saw the example of amazon and facebook manufacturing seeing seeing taking measures to provide breakdowns and taking preventive me measures to prevent breakdown banking fraud detection that whether a transaction is fraudulent and fraudulent or not healthcare nowadays people are like have developed some um, programs which have learned from the data and of that they are going to predict from an x ray that whether this person is having covid or not so this is an example in transport self driving car enhanced driving experience these are some of the examples of data science finance like whom to give the loan and which share should i buy today who's likely to gain who's likely to loss these are some of the other applications so in this data science course the major libraries would be used are these so python will be our main programming language through which we are going to do each and everything 
and then numpy would be our central uh, you can say central library uh, which uh, is going to be used by every other library so even scikit-learn we, uh, will read numpy data and return a numpy data pandas will return your uh, numpy data and uh, read the numpy data so scikit-learn is the library where all of our statistical models and algorithm have been written in python and implemented we just need to call them uh, in python and use them pandas is the library to read the excel file in python format okay matplotlib is my library for plotting the graphs and uh, plotting the charts bar charts frequency charts whatever you name it you can do it with matplotlib so, and uh, tensorflow would be a deep learning library and keras would be a high learning uh, like uh, high level api which uh, with which we are going to use tensorflow okay so uh, in our course what we're going to do it would be more than uh, more than that more than 50 or 60 hours of data with the introduction packages in python numpandas numpy pandas and eda and supervise we're going to study supervise and unsupervised uh, so supervised learning linear regression logistic regression clustering nlp image processing with the multi-layer perceptron and deep learning so now let's jump to some of the examples and see what we're going to do so as you can see in this example we have taken up a data set called fashion amnes data set where there are roughly 60 or 70 thousand images of tags of clothes uh, like each image is of 28 by 28 pixel okay and there are roughly 70 such thousand 70 thousand such images in the data set so here we are importing our libraries like as you can see we are saying import a tensorflow stv tf and from tensorflow import keras and uh, this tensorflow is our deep learning libraries or you can say neural net like uh, neural net uh, library from which we are going to make a neural net and numpy is our module module for mathematical faster mathematical operations matplotlib for plotting the graphs and the images pandas for reading the data so here we uh, in this block we are just reading uh, the data from keras data sets then uh, we extracted the labels and all uh, labels for the uh, tags and here we are showing that the images look like this we are just seeing one sample image from our data set so it's just like this image is of ankle boot and it's being labeled as ankle boot in a data set so data sets is divided into two parts uh, like image and a target target would be the label the name of the item in that image so here we are making a neural network of uh, four layers one would be input layer one would be output layer and the two are hidden layers so any network who any network which is having more than two layer two hidden layers is called deep neural network and here we are seeing that uh, what is our model summary what uh, does our model look like so we have our layer which is flattened layer which is going to put 28 pixel by 28 that means 784 pixel one after the other that's how we feed our data to the algorithm so now we are dividing our train uh, like our data into three part validation training data and testing data here we are telling the model that I what my optimizer is which way I want to optimize my model so that I can best get the best result which loss or which is my ac uh, like which is my which error I want to measure so generally for prediction classification prediction we use sparse categorical cross entropy for multi-class prediction and matrix is accuracy so as you can see when we fit fit means we are learning from our training data whatever the data is saying we are trying to derive some conclusion or a mathematical equation or some mathematical result what our data is saying and i want to do this training data 30 times over my 
training data. So that is epochs. And validation data is like I have read, I have studied from the data, and now I'll need to some uh, like check how much I have learned and uh, did like do I have learned in a correct or in a proper way, or I have learned in a bad way, or my error is too much. So that's why we are doing uh, at the end. You see our validation accuracy. This is what matters is 89. So. I'm roughly close to 90% accuracy on validation and whereas 97% accuracy on my training data set on my test data set for which the, this data uh, the test data is never seen by our model so this is already this is seen by uh, like when I test this uh, test my learning over this test data I am having an accuracy of 88% which is very good. So even I try to plot the graphs. So like this we are going to plot the graphs and see how our error is going. So you see blue line is this line is my loss from training data. Accuracy from my training data and validation loss is my green line and my uh, validation accuracy is the red line so as you can see my uh, as I start I have a high error and as st I start learning by the 30th sample my error is quite low and even for that my uh, validation loss validation loss is also quite low so this tells me that my data is quite uh, like I'm going in the quite right direction and all and I have made the predictions and these predictions are on the basis of the labels we had. So this was all uh, like a brief introduction to data science and what do we do in data science. We take the data, plot the data, plot some graphs and uh, find a result for what we are doing, what not we are doing, what is the right scenario, what would be the right condition to like if you want to launch a product what would be the right time to launch a product based on the condition of the market and our product category and different n number of factors would relate so this is all from my side thank you